If you want to wood turn a segmented helix, then you need to watch this video to the end. I'm going to show you how to make the jig that makes the segments that makes the helix. Word of warning, timid woodworkers should turn away now. The wood turning professor has entered the lab, so let the lesson begin. The helix project was completed in 2021, and I've been meaning to show how the jig is made. If you're not interested in jig making, then I suggest clicking on the actual segmented helix project video instead. This is part one of at least two videos for the next impossible wood turning project, the segmented open helix. For the jig, you're gonna need a straight guide lying parallel to the bandsaw blade, and then you can put on a short platform that will house the main essentials for the jig. The assembly should move freely without touching the bandsaw blade. And I'm going to use the existing mitre channel on the bandsaw and custom fit it with a piece of wood that doesn't wobble from side to side, but still moves freely. I'm sure there are a number of ways to achieve this type of jig, so it'll be interesting to see what you can come up with. I'm using an H piece for the lower assembly, where the channels will allow for micro adjustment on the platform. The first upright is for support and also to anchor elastic bands. This second upright will house the segment holder itself. Needless to say that both uprights are fixed to the H piece only and that allows some adjustments to be made and ensure that the holder is at right angles to the direction of travel through the bandsaw blade. I'm using bolts with wing nuts to hold the main assembly onto the platform. And in this design, you can then move the main assembly closer or further away from the blade, and also slightly rotate it to ensure that the segment holder is perpendicular to the direction of travel. To the second upright, a small piece of plywood is attached uh, through a single bolt, which provides the rotation axis and it's going to be this piece that holds these segments. A stop piece and a segment rest are attached to the rotation platform. The rest piece is profiled to the mitre angle used to bring the segments into a ring, and it's vitally important that the positioning of these two elements will place the center of each segment directly over the rotation center, namely the bolt. Naturally, the placement of these will depend on the size of the segments you're using for your project. What I recommend is that you map out in 2D the helix onto paper first and make sure you are happy with all the measurements needed for doing any of the wood cutting. Now, I'm really going to strongly recommend that you dust off your old mathematics books and make sure you're up to date on your trigonometry. I'm using a small toggle clamp to hold the segment pieces in place. Then the rotation platform is slotted onto the main assembly using two nuts to tighten the system with minimal wobble but still have free rotation around the bolt. So if you can move the rotation platform whilst keeping it as close to flat against the second upright and if it can fall back into position when raised, then it's about right. I attach a couple of elastic bands to help keep the rotation platform close to the upright and also to help it return to its lowest position. In essence, that's the jig completed. The whole jig can now move parallel to the bandsaw blade and is free to rotate when moving through the blade. And this is critical to the whole operation. Ordinarily, to get flat rings of segments, the top and bottom surface of each segment is kept flat only the sides are mitered to the necessary angle in order to close the ring. However, in a segmented helix, the top and bottom surfaces must be angled to match the desired helical angle. I achieve this using a straight ramp, because the ultra mega important point here is that the helical angle of each segment changes from the outside to the inside of the ring. If you cut these surfaces with a bevel or compound cut, they will not produce a seamless segmented helix. You can give it a go and let me know if you succeed. I know you'll get fairly close if you use this methodology only when the diameter is large. 
Otherwise, you'll need to vary that helical angle on the top and bottom surface of each segment. The segment is secured in the jig, and as it moves forward, the rotation platform rides up the ramp on the right-hand side of the video, and it increases the rotation angle of that platform. So the angle keeps increasing as the jig is moved along, thus varying the angle of the cut on the top and bottom surface. I recommend that you calculate what the helical angle should be at 5mm intervals through the segment depth and then adjust the ramp profile accordingly. The smaller the diameter of the final cylinder, the ramp becomes increasingly non-linear. I'm adjusting the ramp so that the front of the segment touches the bandsaw blade where the rotation platform is at its first helical angle. This was 3 degrees for my system. The ramp profile is calculated such that when the blade passes through the rear of the segment, the rotation platform is at the last helical angle. And again, for this project, it was going to be 5.1 degrees. Of course, your project may require different helical angles. With that all said, let's get a piece in and start cutting the varying helical angle. You'll need to cut all segments accurately so it will pay for you to have a sharp blade in there for this work and it will save you a lot of hassle of the blade drifting about and causing headaches further down the line. Here I'm just confirming that the piece did have the correct changing helical angles that I needed for the final cylinder. The blade is at the front of the piece now and at the back of the piece, now. So you can see that the front of the piece has a shallower helical angle than the back of the piece, which is closest to the axis. And this may be my invention, a woodworking cut that I've not seen before. Have you? With all the pieces cut, they can then be assembled into the helix and you can pick up all the details of how to do that in the previous video. If you have any questions regarding this video, then please get in touch, comment down below or PM me. And I'm really interested to see how others would approach this type of wood turning, and I'd really like to see photos of your final results. Not to scare anybody, but this project is a walk in the park compared to the open helix. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful, and I'll catch you next time.